Well, hello there. This is Dimon360, and I'm coming to you with this tier list slash power ranking discussion, because today we are going to be discussing the High Republic era of Jedi um, and how powerful the era was, how powerful were the Jedi in the High Republic, because I have talked about the High Republic quite a bit in the past three um, of these Jedi I've already discussed um, power wise two of them have versus videos um, and yeah you know I've talked about these Jedi but I haven't really given the full scope of this era and how powerful it was and since I'm probably the only person on the internet who does high Republic power scaling I thought it would be best to take multiple multiple characters kind of address their feats and address you know where they scale to as far as i'm concerned so i did use a tier list for this um and i've designed all of the tiers for the different scales so we have at the very top we have the grand master tier the Council Tier, Master Tier, Knight Tier, Padawan Tier, Initiate Tier, Fodder, and then for characters who are hard to scale, we put them in hard to scale. And that is the power scaling that I've been using for a very long time. Big thing to keep in mind is that a Jedi's rank does not determine where they're going to be on the tier list. Like, for example... Um, Anakin Skywalker is obviously a Jedi Knight. He's not going to be in the Knight tier. I think we can all agree he's a little stronger than the Knight tier at the very least. Um, oh yeah, and down here is a bunch of other High Republic characters who we're not going over in this video. But if you guys are a big fan of this video and you want to see more Jedi from this era, um, yeah, leave your comments down below. Also, I am going to have a linked in the video are the these characters respect threads. And the reason is is that I was able to pretty quickly get all of these characters power scaling due to the fact that there are respect threads on Comic Vine for them. Respect threads have been something that have helped me in the past with versus videos. So I wanted to give a shout out, and in case you don't feel like my word is proof enough of these characters' feats, um, I will have the respect threads so I can actually show my work and show my proof. But um, yeah, without further ado, we're gonna start with the three characters that I um, that I already talked about, which are Avar Chris, Vernestra Rowe, and Loden Greatstorm. And then we'll go in order from there. So Avar Chris was featured in my Avar Chris vs. Darth Plagueis vs. video. Um, she didn't beat him. Uh, she got close, but she didn't beat him. And in that video, I made the claim that she was low Grandmaster tier at the very least. And that is something I still stand by. So I'm not going to you know, drag her all the way up here. But she does fit in the low Grandmaster tier. And for all the people who might disagree with this or not like this, Avar is outright stated to be one of the most powerful Jedi of the era. I mean, she's using some form of battle meditation across multiple star systems. She's able to pull a giant star cruiser out of the sky. Though she does ultimately fail to successfully pull it down to the ground another thing to keep in mind is that the leveler was nearby when she tried to perform this feat now the leveler in the high republic is this creature that sucks off force energy and weakens a force user and starts to kill them and devour their force energy so it is possible that avar was hindered it's not outright stated. There's no way to outright confirm that. But there's also nothing to deny it. So it's kind of up in the air. But 
yeah, Avar is consistently stated to be one of the most powerful Jedi. She has the feats um, on Hetzel in Light of the Jedi to prove it. I mean, she's creating these telepathic networks with dozens, if not hundreds of Jedi. Not hundreds. I don't know if she... I know she had up to 53 Jedi in Light of the Jedi. Um, she's able to use some version of that ability to subdue the dark power of the Dren gear um, and keep the Jedi all communicated through Starlight Beacon. Um, she is able to rip through um, a giant mech suit with a force push or force blast. She decimates uh, Lorna D in a fight. And yeah, plenty of other feats. Again, I've already... I've already talked about her in the past. If you've seen my Avar Chris vs. Darth Plagueis video, she is super, super, super powerful and easily, easily respectable. Next up, we have Vernestra Rowe. Now, Vernestra is featured up against Ben Skywalker. Um, she also has her own pre-mortem ranking of power. Ultimately, that's a... Um, I was trying to copy the Finalysis power scaling i am looking to change from that pretty soon i don't know it's not my format so i don't want to use someone else's format but um yeah vernestra is an interesting character um in that because she's a natural prodigy i do stand by a lot of what i said against ben skywalker she does tend to rely on specialty, but looking at Vernestra's feats all around, she was able to telekinetically deflect some debris, um, or like some small stuff, or she was actually able to use force stasis to lock some debris in an airlock. That's the feat. I'm sorry, I mis I misinterpreted it with another character, but um yeah, she used force stasis to block off an airlock with some debris. She's been able to fight and defeat Wreath Silas. Wreath is another character who's down here somewhere. Um, oh, here he is. Here's Wreath Silas. Um, now, Wreath has also been shown outdueling his master, Comac Vitus, who... Again, there's no way to definitively scale Comac, but he is at least in the master tier, somewhere between low and high master tier. Um, I don't know exactly where, but we'll determine that. Wreath was able to just definitively beat him in a sparring session, and Vernestra was able to beat Wreath in a sparring session, though she did claim the two of them were equals as duelists. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that Wreath um, is not as good at using the Force. Um, he has a natural um, definity or disaffinity with the Force. Um, that's one of his character traits, not character traits, but um, parts of his Jedi growth is that he is um, not very powerful, and Vernestra is a prodigy, so she is by nature far more powerful. Um so that's something to keep in mind um, that she probably scales. Again, we'll get to Wreath Silas another day if you guys are interested. He's a really good character. But um, keeping all that in mind, I think putting Vernestra in the low master tier, I think, works. I don't want to upscale her too high. Um, so I think low, not low knight, low master. Um, she's already very, very well. Either high knight or low. No, I'd give her a low master. And the reason I would is because she did survive the Battle of Valo. She battled the Drengear um, aboard Starlight Beacon. She survived the Fall of Starlight. I think she survived the Fall of Starlight. I think that was confirmed. Um, she is already a very well-respected Jedi Knight amongst her peers. And she's held in very, very high regard, even so young. She's already got the feats with the um, the stasis and the um, the airlock. She's able to defeat Imri, her Padawan, pretty quickly. She's able to defeat Wreath Silas. She's able to fight off scores of Nile. 
on her own. She has a light whip function on her lightsaber that allows her to alter her way of fighting. So yeah, that's where I would scale Vernestra. For more info, I would say go to the Vernestra versus Ben Skywalker video. But yeah. And then we have Loden Great Storm, who doesn't have a versus video on my channel, but he has um, a post-mortem video, similar to Vernestra. Again, I really got to change that format, but Loden is basically one of the best Jedi this era has. He's considered, like, arguably the best Jedi in the entire galaxy. Um, he is extremely powerful. He's ha He has titles such as Legendary and Venerable, all to his name. He is called by another Jedi as the arguably the best, I think, the best Jedi of the generation. Uh, he has a bunch of crazy stuff, but he also has a bunch of really good feats. Sorry, I'm yawning in the middle of the video. But, um, yeah, Loden has feats such as um, ripping moles out of, or mole bombs out of the ground, deflecting a starship cannon with his lightsaber. He is able, he's able to do those two things. And then, most impressively, uh, he's able to defeat Markeon Rowe while injured and tortured. But um, he states that he could redirect or redeflect a proton torpedo with ease. Um, and then most impressively is during the events of the Rising Storm, after him and Bell Zedifar are trying to catch Lorna D's starship, the two of them successfully managed to pull back her starship, um, similar to what Avar did. But what makes this more impressive is not the fact that it was two Jedi, but um, the fact that Loden had spent the last year um, being tortured by the Nile. So Loden was like nowhere near his full strength when him and Bell pulled the ship back. And again, a large part of that can be considered to the fact that um, Bell was helping, but like, the fact that Loden was even standing at that point, considering the torture he'd gone through, is still incredibly impressive. And the only thing that stopped these two Jedi was um, the leveler, which killed Loden. Spoiler alert. And, yeah, originally I said Loden was closer to High Council tier, but I think... When you look at everything, I think he does fit in the low Grandmaster. And I'm actually going to put him above Avar because his accolades go well above Avar. And him and Bell were going to accomplish something that Avar could not while Loden was way below his prime. While Avar was at her normal consistent level of ability while Loden was nowhere near and was able to do something similar. Even with Bell. Um, helping him out. So, I think it's only fitting. Now we have Elzar Man. Elzar is another Jedi who is actually... him. In, actually, I'm going to rank him and Stellan Geos um, on the same. Because they are both... They scale pretty directly to Avar Chris. So, they either go in High Council or Low Grandmaster. Um... Elzar and Stellan, you know, they grew up with Avar. Um, they're all... Stellan is a member of the Council um, and a well-respected one, though he did make statements that Loden was superior. So Loden being above Stellan, that's pretty consistent. Sorry, I'm going to move. But, um, yeah, in terms of feats, because I can't just claim someone's low Grandmaster tier without feats, um, Elzar Man has feet um, very comparable to Avar Chris in the Light of the Jedi novelization. Um, he's able to create rain, rain clouds to clear some fires of the Force alongside Avar. Avar states that he has a telepathic um, intuition or an ability to sense lies that is better than hers. 
and during the events of the rising storm elzar fights off against um a plethora of nile he's able to fight off an army and he does better than most jedi on that battlefield um but the main feat with elzar man that really pits him in my opinion to low grandmaster to high council is during the rising storm when for a brief moment elzar gives into the dark side and he actually uses tele- he uses telekinesis to lift one of the planet Valo's fl- floating sky islands. And he actually pulls the sky island and throws it at several Nile starships to crash into them. And the fact that he quite literally telekinetically hurled a small island... Um, Again, there's no way to determine the actual size of the island. But that feat alone, I think, and the fact that he's stated to be comparable to Avar, I think, means he comfortably goes in low Grandmaster. Stellan is, I mean, he also, I would say, goes in this year. He is comparable to these, to these three, not these three, these two, um, he and Elzar are scaled pretty closely in their books. We're there together. Now, Stellan was also a big fighter in The Rising Storm, and most of his feats come from there. He was able to um, recreate Avar Chris's battle meditation or battle meld um, during the fight to create a ray of communication. He was able to fight off Lorna D. And a group of Nile. Um, he was able to. I'm trying to think. Yeah, he was able to. I'm pretty sure. Deflect a massive blast. He was able to jump from place to place. Um, Stellan's main feats are his fights with Lorna D and another character named Tyoric, who Elzar also fights. And I'm also going to say that. Um, Elzar is probably above Stellan due to the Tyork fight. Basically, this actually I have Tyork. She's over here. Um, here she is. We'll go over her another day. But um, yeah, basically, the Jedi are attempting to arrest Tyork or bring her in, and Tyork goes all out and tries to kill Elzar, Belzedafar, and Stellan. Now, keep in mind, all three Jedi were holding back because they weren't trying to kill her. And Ty ends up fighting against Elzar and Stellan. And even though she somewhat defeats them, it's more so because they keep giving her chances to beat them because they're not going all out. Um, and later during the battle, Ty York does claim that she could not defeat Elzar Man. So she is definitively below him. And Stellan was able to fight evenly with her. Or he was able to fight for a similar period of time as Elzar. He did a little worse. So that's why Elzar is one step above. But yeah, I think that addresses those three. Again, if you want more feats, if you want more proof, um, do go to their respect threads that will be linked down below. All three of them have them. Loden does too. All of these characters should. But, um, yeah. Because, also, Stellan does have a couple anti-feats to his name. That's another reason for him being on the downside of Low Grandmaster. Be simply because, you know, yeah. Um, he gets defeated by Lorna D and her group of Nile while exhausted. And he also gets ambushed by a Trandoshan mercenary during the Rising Storm, which I don't think these other three would have been. Alright, so moving to Kiev Trennis. Kiev Trennis is... I like... I think she's a prodigy. I don't know if she's stated to be one, but she seems to get very good at the abilities that she has. Um... Now, Keeb Trennis' most impressive feats are her ability to duel against her master, Skier, and Avar Chris while she was emotionally unbalanced. She 
is skilled with saber staff combat and Jarakai dual blade fencing. She was able to, I don't know if she has the ability of psychometry, but she was able to somewhat connect with the Drengear um, through some sort of mind trip to try and connect with it and locate where it was. And yeah, beyond that, she knows telekinetic, telekinetic saber, levitation, um, basic uh, TK, telepathic. Um, for sleeps, she is fighting armies and armies of Nile as well as the Drengear pretty consistently. So, yeah, I think the main thing to consider is the fact that she was able to duel against Skier as well as Avar. Those are her two biggest feats to her name, as far as I'm concerned. And even though they do scale um, much above Comac Vitus, I actually think Keev. I actually think Keeve is very close to Vernestra. She's either in the low master or high knight tier, the low master tier. Um, obviously, Vernestra beat a Jedi who beat Comac. Skier and Avar do scale above Comac just a little bit. Um, but Keeve didn't beat them. She was able to land a force push on Avar Chris, who um, was emotionally unbalanced and wasn't going all out, but still. A nerfed low Grandmaster tier is still impressive, so I think it's safe to say um, that that's a thing. And considering the fact that one year into the future, or as we know in Phase 3 of the High Republic, Keith Trennis is going to be a Jedi Master in rank, which is a year after where we've seen her. So, yeah, I think low Master should work. As for Skier... I am going to put him at the very bottom of low council. Skier does have some good feats to his name. He is able to, again, fight off a score of Nile. He's able to tank multiple missiles like an absolute beast. He is able to telekinetically ragdoll three Drengears while being amplified by their power. Um... He is basically, he is, I think, the second in command to Avar Chris on the Starlight Beacon. So he is a very well respectable Jedi Master. Skier's biggest weakness is the fact that he is going through a some sort of Trandoshan disease that is hindering his Force abilities. So throughout his stories, Skier is unable to call upon his full power, which is sad because you know he's probably way more powerful than this and we just can't see it but um yeah even considering how considering you know how good he was doing while severely limited i think he was already close to the low council tier and i think knowing that he was hampered in some way definitively put him there Excuse me. Didn't mean to yawn. But, um, yeah. That is that feat. And now Bell Zedifar. And Bell Zedifar is one of my favorite characters. And I'm going to put him in the low to midnight tier. Um, the reason I'm going to put him there is because he stated to have immense promise as a Jedi. Um, and he also has... Oh, the... How? Um, so I'm going to put um, Balls out of Far in this tier. Um, he is, again, stated to have immense potential... With the Force, Loden states that he's already ready to be a Jedi Knight. By Light of the Jedi, and then by the events of Fallen Star, while he's still a Padawan, everybody's telling him he's ready to be a Jedi Knight. Um, he does help Loden by using the Force on the ship during the Rising Storm. During Light of the Jedi, he's able to 
yank explosives out of the ground telekinetically. Um, Bell does have a feat that he refers back to in The Rising Storm, in which very early into his apprenticeship, he actually managed to deflect blaster fire from, or he was able to disable up to 100 training droids, um, I think before they even shot. It was something on those lines. And, I mean, that's early Bell before we even see him, you know, actually committing feats. He's stated to be very adept with a lightsaber and able to fight off. He's able to fight off small battalions of Nile easily throughout his many showings. And I think all in all, he doesn't have the same uh, feats that um, Vernestra or Keeve do. He doesn't have the same, like, bang feats that would get me to think he's high knight tier. I think that's a bit of a stretch. I think there is a gap between these two and what he's capable of. So I'm going to scale him here, even though I think one day it is possible that Bell could stand with them, considering everything he's already accomplished now. And now here's an interesting character, Porter Angle. Now, Porter Angle is probably going to be the most divisive character we have today. And this is his younger self and his older self. Because in the High Republic, in Phase 1, we meet him while he's old. And in Phase 2, we meet him while he's young. And we get to know who he is. So Porter Angle, this might be a hot take, is going to go in the mid-Grandmaster. And... Actually, Old Porter could be argued to be in Low Grandmaster or Mid Grandmaster. I'm going to put him in Low Grandmaster. But Prime Porter Angle has a bunch of feats to his name. He is highly regarded as one of the best Jedi of his generation, both 150 years in the past and 150 years in the present. He is stated um, in Light of the Jedi to be a better lightsaber duelist than Loden Greatstorm. And even more impressively, he is stated to be a better lightsaber duelist than Yoda. Now that's probably the topic of contention. Keep in mind, better lightsaber duelist than Yoda. Not more powerful than Yoda. Um, and we'll get to that. We'll get to Yoda eventually on this video. But, um... Yeah, Prime Porter Angle, if you've read the Blade comics, he is able to fight off an army, a literal army of mercenaries with by himself with no difficulty whatsoever um, to his name. There is this character named General Vice who he is pitted up against, and Vice claims or boasts how many Jedi she's killed, and Porter takes her out in, like, two hits, or disables her in, like, two hits. Um, like, it's just no issue for him. Him with his ally Barash, they're able to telekinetically redirect several missiles. Porter is able to destroy a tank with, like, a lightsaber throw. Um, he is able to briefly telekinetically manipulate his lightsaber, um, in the midst of combat, he is skilled with single-bladed combat and Jarkai and Force Integration. He literally has the title of the Blade of Bardada. Um, and even in his old age, when he is far past his prime, he is still regarded as extremely legendary by characters like Stellan and Loden. Uh, so I think it makes sense that Porter, even post-prime, is low grandmasters considering you know he's still apparently a better duelist than Loden and is considered legendary by Loden, but Prime Porter goes in mid grandmaster because that was when he was you know still actively training and stuff. So now these two characters are pretty new. This is Jedi Master Barnabas Vim and Padawan Sly. They are featured in the one-shot Quest of the Jedi comic. Now, I don't have the actual respect threads for these two, but I do have the link to their comic, um, or an online reading of their comic, or a video of it, 
it's a one shot so there's no feats to hide but um yeah these two i actually think are pretty underappreciated they're technically not high republic jedi because um they were featured in a story from years ago or from a millennia ago from the Jedi of Phase 2, who are the earliest incarnation of the High Republic, and he's considered a legend slash fable. So, there were no Sith around, so I don't think he was an old Republic Jedi, but he also, technically speaking, isn't a High Republic Jedi. He's, like, right in the middle. It's kind of cool. And Sly was his Padawan. But, yeah. So, Barnabas Vim is stated to be a legend within the Jedi archives. He's stated to be a very, very legendary Jedi master, which is quite the claim. And Barnabas does have one very, very impressive force feat to his name that, in my opinion, can put him to low council tier. Actually, I'm going to put these two where I think they are, and then we're going to talk about them. Um, Sly is going to go in the high knight tier. And Barnabas Vim is going to go in the low council tier along with Skier. And the reason Barnabas Vim is going to go in the low council tier is because of a particular feat. Um, basically, Sly and Barnabas are pitted up against um, this duchess or this empress. And she's being empowered by an artifact or a force artifact called... The Echo Stone that's making them all more powerful, but is also uh, manipulating them and turning them to the dark side. And basically, the Matt leader sends her people to attack Sly and Barnabas. And what makes this super, super impressive is the fact that all of these shooters are being amplified by the Echo Stone. Meaning that they are, you know, they have the force aiming their shots. Which goes to both of these two, because they were both fighting off these troopers. And, obviously, when you're using the force to aim your shots, you are going to be way more accurate and way more deadly than, you know, an average Nile. And we see in the comic panels that Barnabas in multiple panels is just casually you know using a single hand to deflect bolts like he barely seems phased um there are some panels where he's holding his lightsaber with two but you get the idea he's integrating force attacks he's knocking back the echo stone um he's able to go through some sort of vision quest but the fact that he was able to fight off so many, like, Force-sensitive shooters is super impressive. And then Sly, um, her big feat is that she destroys the Echo Stone. She cuts it in half, which would probably feature quite a lot of power to do. Um, you could argue Barnabas to be in the High Master tier. Um, but considering his reputation within the Jedi archives and considering how fondly he was looked upon and all of that, I think bottom of low council, probably by a significant margin, we don't know much more, can go for him. And then lastly, we have Yoda. And to put it blatantly, Yoda is a high grandmaster um, during the prequel trilogy, and he is high grandmaster here. I mean, Avar Chris already states that Yoda is better than her, and Yoda is essentially still regarded by everybody as the Grand Master. Super, well, he is Grand Master, but he is still regarded as an incredibly powerful Jedi who's more powerful than 99% of the Jedi. And, yeah, Avar refers to him as a superior in Light of the Jedi, and then also in the comics. Yoda, um, he's able to fight off an entire battalion of Nile um, on Corellia. He's able to stop a cave from collapsing in casually. Um, 
I think those are his feet. The thing about Yoda in this era is that he is stated to be super powerful, but um, he doesn't have a lot of feet. Um, he's stated to be better in this era than the prequel trilogy, but there's no determining that um, because of feet. But yeah, he is stated pretty consistent to his prequel trilogy self. He might not be fighting Sith Lords or lifting living mountains, but hey, apparently he can still do that based on the accolades and stuff. But yeah, these are all the characters that we've gone over today. Yeah, we have five low Grandmaster tier Jedi, two Council tier, and two low Masters. Yeah, no, the higher public ain't weak. Um, don't sleep on this era. It's a really good era. Um, of It has a lot of good Star Wars books. Uh, if you would like to see another um, a part two of this, because there are still plenty of Jedi we haven't gone over, um, yeah. We can fill out this entire tier list one day. Links to the respect threads and comics will be in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.